Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to a path to heaven. Welcome to our blessed show. It's such an honor to welcome you today. May Allah give rahmat to all of us. Before we start the show, let us introduce ourselves. I am Rifat. And I'm Nasmi. We will be with you until the end of this the event. First, let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why you always feel lacking, even though you have such a perfect life? Yeah, we all... We often feel that way. Wait, we will find the answer soon. But first, it is my pleasure to introduce our special guest speaker. He is known as the New Lantern of Islam. And you probably already guessed it, right? And for your information, he just finished his doctorate degree in Karyo Mesir at such a young age. Oh, so impressive. And one more, more than 10,000 audiences come in every his dakwah. No need to linger. Yes, please welcome in Ustaz Shah Rafif. To Ustaz Shah Rafif, you may start the lecture. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to Miss Najmi and Mr. Rifat. Before, our, before we start our lecture, let's start with saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Peace be upon you, and Allah mercy and blessings. Praise our thanks to Allah Almighty, who has given us various kinds of enjoyment so that we can gather on this day. Always greetings and greetings to the Lord of our great Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, along with his family, friends, and followers until the end of the time. On this occasion, I will deliver a lecture entitled Gratitude to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. A happy audience. Gratitude has the meaning of being grateful and accepting wholeheartedly the gifts or favors that Allah has given us. We will not be able to count how many blessings Allah has given, starting from health benefits, the blessings of faith, the blessings of being able to think, and various other blessings that we cannot count one by one. Gratitude is a must. I say it again, gratitude is a must. For us faithful servants of Allah, apart from being a form of our obedience to Allah. Being grateful with us will also make the blessings we receive will be even more. But what is the problem? The problem is why can we be grateful for all the blessings that Allah has given? And why do we always think that blessings are in the form of matter or money? Thinking like this is actually very wrong and fatal. Because if we think like this, it means we are among those who disbelieve Allah's favor. As Allah said in Quran Surah Ibrahim, verse 7, which, which reads, Indeed, if you are grateful, we will definitely add to your blessings. And if you deny my blessings, then in fact, my punishment is very painful. Quran Surah Ibrahim, verse 7. Therefore, if we do not want to be included in the class of people who are kufur for Allah's blessings, then we should be grateful and we should not be not be grateful for the blessings that Allah has given us. Because Allah says in Quran Surah an nahl verse 83, which reads, They know Allah favor. Then, de then they deny it, and most of them are infidels. Su Surah An-Nahl, verse 83. According to Dr. Muhammad Suleiman Al-Ashikor, who dares of interpretation of the Islamic University of Medina, the disbelievers and polytheists know the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, namely the sending of the messenger of Allah, then they deny his prophethood because of their ignorance and violence in words and deeds, which they consider that help belongs to him and they worship him. And most of them reject and oppose. This verse was revealed to the Arabs who came to the prophet. Then the prophet read to him the previous verse. Then he said true. Then turned, left, and did not convert to Islam. 
let us not be like polytheists who doesn't believe in all of blessings. In this occasion, I want to invite all of you to always be grateful for all blessings that Allah has given us. Such is the short lecture that I can convey. I apologize if there are mistakes in words. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Masya Allah. We are sure that we are all very grateful. Right, Najmi? Yes, of course. I'm grateful for the life that I live and for all the audiences that are here right now. Maybe our interviewees wanted to tell us a little story about being grateful. Please, Mr. Davin, tell us this interesting story you wanted to tell to the audience and to our Ustad, Shah Rafi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Ustaz. Okay, first let me introduce myself. My name is Tavin Ansar. Big thanks to this wonderful show, A Path to Hang, for inviting me as an interviewee. So, Ustaz, I have a story from a friend of mine. More precisely, this interesting story is from his father. Mr. Ali, then we'll call him. He is a father of my friend a middle-aged man who is willing to leave comfort and stay away from the arms of his parents and siblings in his hometown in order to build and deepen a meaning of life with the people he loves. Early 2017, he settled in a remote village on the mountain with Jaffa, a village where only 20 families live, lonely, quiet, serene, maybe it can describe the atmosphere of the village. The houses of residents are far from each other. He chose to build a house in the middle of the forest, surrounded by big trees. Together with his wife and two children, he, he lives in a house with walls and a very simple wooden platform. In the yard, he planted his daughter's favorite colorful flowers. He cooks vegetables and fruit and in his backyard for his daily meals. Under his house, there's a coffee garden and a small river. The gurgling of the water falls so that the rocks on the riverbed could be visible. The sounds of goats and chickens that he raises accompany his daily life. During the day, he was eradicating wild plants in the coffee garden, which was not far from his house. Someone came and shouted his name, then he immediately approached. He entertains guests in a bamboo valley on the ter terrace of the house, with a jar of banana chips which he prepares from the garden in the backyard and a pot of water to accompany him. He talked about how, struck, oh, how he started to move from his hometown to the village he lives in. He already pocketed his mother's blessings and he's letting him go with his heart. When he arrives in the village, he and his wife deliberately built and lived in a house that was far from other neighbors. The reason is because he wants to get closer and do to the almighty God Allah and doesn't want to do many things that are less useful. The coffee plantation supported his family livelihood. The mountain and the hot, hot sun, sometimes the rain did not prevent him from taking care of his coffee garden every day. He has to wait once he be able to harvest his coffee trees. The yields were insignificant, only enough to buy seeds, and the rest was saved for the children's school needs. Every he lives along with his wife. Neighbors were far apart, only a cat named Millie who accompanied him at home when he went to the market. He spends more time worshipping and being grateful for everything he possesses every day. His children go to school in the lower village and only, only come home on holidays. He and his wife struggled and worked hard to see their two students get the proper learning. I'm grateful that the children want to go to school down there. It's okay to be far from the children. Let them learn and seek knowledge to be successful in order to have a better future, he said. So is that. I can infer a lesson from the story that I had told before. Being grateful is a must. But then I want to ask you a question. Are there still people in this world who want to live their life of luxury to live simply and be grateful? Thank you, Ustaz Zahrafif. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Davin. Many of us asking, are there still people in this modern era who want to live their life of luxury, to live simply and always be grateful? 
yeah i think that in today modern era people still find it difficult to be grateful and they don't feel satisfied quickly many are still competing to pursue worldly pleasures for only a moment they are very ambitious to get more than what was already there start to forget himself forget the land even forget god in the hadith al bukhari has also been mentioned about this which reads if a man is given a valley full of gold he would want another second if he is given the second one he wants another third nothing can stop his guts except the crown and allah is the most recipient of repentance who ever wants to repent so i hope that in the future all of us will always be grateful for what we have obtained gratitude actually smooths our sustenance especially if we share with others our blessings will increase along with the increase in our sustenance allah says in surah ibrahim verse 7 which reads if you are grateful i will add my blessings to you however if you are kufur actually my punishment is very painful quran surah ibrahim verse 7 i think that's my answer for mr david story i give it to Rif- rifat and najmi thank you very much thank you ustaz syahrafi masya allah what an interesting story and answer Masha'Allah. And now we are going to the next session. Yes, this is the moment that some of you have been waiting for. It is a Q&A session. And you all could write down your name in a private room chat to me. We will wait for your question. Okay, the first question comes from Ms. Nabila. For Ms. Nabila, please welcome. Assalamualaikum Ustaz Sharafif. I want to ask you about the feeling of gratitude. Um, there is always joy and sadness. If one of the sadness is caused by ungratefulness, is it by maintaining gratitude in life we will not feel sadness? Thank you. Waalaikumsalam, Ms. Nabila. Happiness and sorrow are not a law that will surely color this life. No human being continues to feel happy nor does continue to grieve and grieve. Everyone feels happy and sorrow comes alternately. Ikrimah rahimahumullah God said, every human being must have felt joy and sorrow. Therefore, make your joy is gratitude and your sorrow be patient. That's my answer. Do you want to ask any question again, Ms. Nabila? Mm, so how, Ustad? How can we maintain gratitude with all we have now? Ah, nice question. How can we maintain gratitude with all we have now? First, you have to realize there are still many people who are less fortunate than us. Second, always remember that there are still many people who are less. Always remember that Allah gives us the opportunity to live today, even though our lifespan is limited. The last one is everything we get in this world is a free gift from Allah. The pressure of air. and our body organs, for example. We can breathe freely, can see, and our or- other organs work according to their respective functions. That's why we have to be grateful in our life. I think that's my answer. Thank you, Ms. Nabila, for the question. Masya Allah, Ustaz Shahrafi. What a great answer. Masya Allah. And now we have another question that needs an answer. Yes, it is true. The other question come from Mr. Adga. Please, Mr. Adga, maybe our Ustaz Shafafi can enlighten us. Okay, Assalamualaikum Ustaz Shafafi. I have a question. Uh, can gratitude keep us from proceeding? 
Waalaikumsalam Mr. Aga. Being grateful doesn't prevent us from proceeding. You have to distinguish the willingness to be better with gratitude for what we have now. As Allah says in Al-Quran, indeed, Allah doesn't condition of a people so that they change the condition that is in themselves. That is the difference between this, the willingness to be better and being, grit, being grateful. Thank you for the question. Okay, so how can we be grateful? I mean, how can we show our gratitude to God? Well, okay. Uh, I'm gonna tell you how to be grateful in our life. There is four ways to be grateful according to Imam Ghazali. First one, being grateful with our heart. Gratitude with the heart is done by full, fully realizing that all the blessings and sustenance that are obtained are solely the gift and mercy of Allah. Second, being grateful with our words. When a person's heart is very sure that all the blessings he gets come from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, he will definitely say Alhamdulillah, praise to Allah. Therefore, if you get a favor from someone, his mouth still praise Allah and say Alhamdulillah, because it must be realized this, that this person is just intermediary for Allah. The third one is being grateful with our actions. Gratitude with actions means that all the blessings obtained should be used in a way that is pleasing to him. The Prophet Muhammad SAW explained that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala really likes to see the blessings that are given to his servants by making the best use of them. The last one is take care of pleasure. If you get a favor from Allah, try to take care of it so it doesn't get damaged. It is like giving a trust from Allah. For example, if we have a healthy body, we must keep our body healthy and avoid disease. That's that's how to be grateful, according to Mr. Arga questions. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, I think that's all I got for today. Rifat and Najmi, you may continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Usman. Ya Allah. I expect no less from you, Ustaz Shahlafif. And now, sadly, we have reached the end of this. Profit for taking time out of your busy schedules. And also, thank you for the new insight. I hope and we hope that we can hear more another dakwah and lecture from our Ustaz Shahlafif. Me too. But every meeting comes to an end. Goodbye and may Allah bring us together again in Jannah. Amin. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.